he just be let in. Yes. Okay. Welcome everybody to a meeting of the Jones Library Building Committee. Thank you so much for uh, for coming. Uh, I'm going to call us to order and ask you to signify your presence verbally. Sharon. Here. George. Here. Alex. Present. Thank you, Farah. Here. Christine. Here. Paul Bockelman. Present. And uh, I'm Austin Sarrett, and I'm present. Okay, next item of business is the approval of minutes. I believe on the agenda it says three sets of minutes, but I think in the packet I only saw two. Correct. Okay, so we are approving minutes. We're going to look at the minutes first of May 7 and then of May 21st. So uh, minutes of May 7th, is there a motion to approve them? Motion to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. That's fabulous. Um, corrections to the minutes of May 7. Okay. Before we vote, I note the presence of Pam Rooney. Pam, do you just want to signify that you can hear us and you can be heard? Can't hear you. Cannot hear you. Can't hear you. There, you yeah, go. Really now present. there we go. Nicely done. Thank you so I, much. I, I just barely got the uh, the panelist link. So okay. Well, we're we're, we're thrilled that you we're thrilled that you're here. So we are about to vote on the minutes from May seven. Uh, Pam, do you have any edits to those minutes or any changes that need to be made? There's a typo in it, but I'm not going to worry about that. Okay. So not worrying about the typos. Uh Voting on the minutes of May 7. George? Yes. Um, Alex? Yes. Far? Yes. Christine? Yes. Uh, Paul? Yes. And Pam? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank you so much. Okay, next, a motion to approve the minutes of May 21. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Fabulous. Corrections to those minutes, May 21st. Okay, seeing none. Uh, on the question of approving the minutes of May 21st, George? Yes. Uh, Alex? Yes. Clara? Yes. Paul? Yes. Christine? Yes. Pam? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm not and... going to take it personally that you didn't ask my opinion. Oh, my God, Sharon. I'm sorry. I forgot. Sharon? Totally fine. Yes. Yes. I'll get you something nicer for the holidays now. <laughs> okay, boss man. <laughs> okay. okay. Next, we have a report from the town manager. Um, want to let you know that uh, I've uh, appointed Melissa Zodwitsky, who is our finance director, to serve on the Jones Library Building Committee. She will take the place of our former co-interim finance director, Jen LaFountain. Jen will obviously still be involved in terms of the financing piece, but Melissa, who's in the audience, is eager to join and be participating in the meeting in the future. Once the So the appointment will be reviewed by the town council's TSO committee on Thursday and then hopefully voted by the town council on Monday, in which case that makes it official. Wonderful. Thank you, Paul. And we look forward, we look forward to working with our new colleague. Paul, did you want to say anything about the MOA? Yeah, so the, there is a signed MOA between uh, the town and the library trustees, um, which which identifies that the trustees will be paying for the additional costs incurred as a result of the redesign of the project and the value engineering. So that is that has been completed. Thank you. Anything else, Paul? No, nope, that's it. Any questions for the town manager? Okay, thank you, Paul. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the work on the MOA. Okay, next we are going to have a report from our acting OPM, Bob. 
Yes, good evening. Thanks, uh, Austin. Uh, just a quick update for folks that um, aren't aware. I, I've stepped in on a short-term basis as the owner's project manager to help get the project through the bidding phase of, of the project primarily is a cost savings measure right now. Uh, given my past experience, I meet the state requirements for OPMs in terms of having a, an in-house OPM. We do envision that we will have an OPM on board going forward uh, when the project goes to construction. But again, as a cost saving measure, we're doing this in-house right now. Um, I will let FAA talk about where we stand relative to the design activities that are ongoing, but I'll note uh, for the committee's benefit that uh, we will be starting the contractor pre-qualification process next week. Uh, the advertisement uh, to announce that pre-qualification process will be going out on Wednesday, and it's um, Ultimately, a, a couple of month process where contractors first submit qualifications materials, a committee gets established to review that qualification material, and we ultimately uh, qualify general contractors and subcontractors that are then eligible to submit bids on the project. Um, it may seem like we're doing this relatively early, but it's a it's a time consuming process that we have to get through in order to then gear up for our target bidding advertisement date of, of mid-September. Um, the other process that we'll be starting in the next week or two will be advertising for temporary space for the library. <clears throat> Again, that's a fairly time-consuming process to get the advertisement out there, <laughs> uh, receive responses, vet the responses, do the proper level of due diligence, and ultimately uh, you know, have a, a temporary space um, on hand uh, when we need it um, in, in the fall. Uh, so that'll be starting shortly. Uh, Sharon did include a copy of a overall bar chart schedule that I put together mm -hmm. uh, when I first got involved in this role. And what I tried to do was to put everything on one piece of paper so we could try to see it all at one time, understand how all the pieces fit in with each other. And I, I won't go through that because it, it it's a, I, I, you know, I could spend probably an hour talking about how all these various steps interrelate, but wanted to make certain that we put them all on a piece of paper. We right. understood what needed to be done and when it needed to be done in order to keep the project moving on schedule. Great. Okay. So, um, Bob, before I call on um, Alex, uh, we have some invoices to approve. Uh, yes, we do have just one invoice to approve tonight, okay. and uh, I'll, I'll note that this is an invoice that was received a couple of months ago, yep. and it's actually for service that, is, that were provided by FAA in the late fall, the early late fall, early winter uh, period. So it's, we're catching up a little bit on this. Okay. Um, so what if it's okay, Bob? I'm just going to ask now. Alex has a question, and then we'll come back to the approval of the invoice. Is that okay? Alex? Yeah, thanks. Um, Bob, I just had a quick question. Um, you said there's a the committee that reviews the pre-qualification, and I was just curious, is that, how does that appointment happen, or who who goes on that committee, or is it just town officials, or what does that look like? It's, it's actually established by DCAM and the state relative to procedures for the pre-qualification of contractors. Um, there are, if I remember correctly, four seats that need to be filled. The owner provides uh, one individual. The procurement officer sits in the committee. Typically, the OPM sits in the committee, and the designer typically sits on the committee. Uh, so it's 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 really a functional committee where you bring in the owner's project manager, you bring in the designer, you bring in you know the community's chief procurement officer, and together. Uh, come to a decision regarding what firms would be pre-qualified to then bid on the project. Great. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Bob at this point? Okay, Bob, do you want to uh, share your screen so we can... Uh, Sharon, if you have the packet handy, I don't actually have it handy on my PC at home. Um, if you could bring up the invoice, that would be great. Okay, that's, let's see. Let's see. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> uh, I don't want to end. I. How do I get out of full screen? Help me here. Um, if you 
don't have it, I can probably find it and, and get, it, get it up in a moment. I can't get out of full screen. Uh -huh. Hit escape. Oh, exit full screen. Please hold. Okay, it's common. I'll get there eventually. Oh, man, face. Pam, do you have a question while Sharon is... Yeah, yeah I Cameron. thought I would take advantage of the time. Absolutely. Um, on, on Bob, on your timeline, um, you do show the design review board and planning board seeing this uh, in two weeks for uh, a follow-up review, presumably on the, the changes that are being made. The question is, and, and on, the, on the invoice that we see, there still is a little bit of money left for meeting with the planning board and design review board. But the question is more, uh, are the drawings going to be available for them to even be considering in two weeks? Um, I short answer is yet, but I'll let FAA elaborate a little bit more on that. Um, I do want to uh, make one comment relative to the invoice uh, that Sharon will be pulling up in a moment. The invoice for services that I'll be recommending get approved today or for services, as I mentioned before, that were previously completed, uh, working uh, and meeting with and preparing for meetings with the, the Town Historic Commission, as well as uh, submittals to the Mass Historic Commission. There are a couple of tasks, as you noted, relative to the Planning Board and Design Review Board. Those tasks have now been shifted to the new agreement that FAA has that's being funded through the library. So we will not see, the town will not see, the town will see a bill uh, for those services, but they'll be, uh, they are part of the overall fee that has been agreed upon for FAA moving forward. In other words, they were, they were forward looking tasks that FAA, FAA were going to do uh, given that they're forward-looking tasks, they're now built into the forward-looking mm -hmm. um, agreement that um, the library trustees and the town have agreed to. Um, Ellen, it, do you want to... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Pam, follow, I was just... follow, a follow-up to that. So does that mean that, that the, the bottom line uh, is dropped by $4,000 and that $4,000 goes to the next, uh, next um, contract? That's correct. That's the effect, yes. Ellen, did you want to say something about um, the forthcoming meetings with the various town committees and what you will have to share with those groups yeah. and w when you will have to share it? Yes, thank you, Austin. Uh, yes, we <clears throat> we had a really good meeting with um, Paul, Christine, and um, the building inspector about how to approach the approvals we needed. So Josephine, you have more of the detail, but yes, we're going to be delivering the drawings um, to them in the time frame we requested. Good. Okay. All right, Pam, are you okay with that? So we'll okay, Bob, Sharon, how about these invoices? I got it. Don't see them so far. Can you see it now? No, no. I see. It. There, there we it go. Is. Brilliant. Um, if you could make you could make it a little. You could zoom zoom it a little bit so we could. There you go. All right. So, Bob, um, do you want to explain to us again? Certainly. Um, as you can see on the screen, the uh, request that's being considered today is the one in the center of the screen. The task before that, um, there's no yep. uh, billing requested, and the task after that, there's no billing requested. Yep. Um, so the two items I mentioned were the Historic Commission and the Mass Historic Commission services that were previously provided that we're recommending um, approval of payment for. The services that Pam alluded to are the Planning Board and Design Review tasks um, at $2,000 a piece, and those were uh, were uh, were basically follow up meetings with both those of those entities, not the submittal of new documents, which is what uh, the the forward looking um, contract anticipates. But bottom line, as I indicated, uh, this will be the extent of billing under this agreement, and there right. won't be any further uh, billing. And the amount is, is thirty two thousand five hundred dollars. Correct. Okay. 
Pam, before we get into this, I'm just going to ask someone to make a motion that we uh, recommend the approval of the payment of the invoice. Someone would do that? So moved. And is there a second? I'll second. Okay, Pam Rooney. Thank you. Uh, the question I had is uh, just above the two zeros on the earned column, and the, it has to do with the Mass Historic uh, Commission tax credits. And I wonder if the work that was done in this period of time for tax credits has attained us um, the the documentation that we need for do we have do we have the tax credits in hand? I think the answer to that question is no, but I'll ask Sharon Sherry. Sharon? Yeah, no, we won't be getting historic tax credits. You're not you're, so so this was money spent in in effort to obtain them, but you're, you've decided to not pursue them. No, we pursued them, uh, but we were denied. Oh, okay. Okay. Any other questions about the invoice? Okay. So the motion is to recommend payment of $32,500. Uh, on that motion, Sharon? Yes. George? Yes. Alex? Yes. Farah? Yes. Paul Bockelman? Yes. Christine? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank you very much. And Pam oh. Rooney votes yes. Oh, you know, sorry, Pam. Pam votes yes. Thank you. Um, okay, Bob, anything else from you? I don't think so at this point. Uh, oh, great. Mainly it's we've got the prequel yep. and the temporary space ahead of us. Thank you, and thanks for the work you're doing. Okay, now we are grateful for the presence of colleagues from FAA and looking forward to your report. Ellen. Josephine. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having us. Um, Josephine and I are, are here. Tony's here as well. Uh, uh, good to see everybody again. So what we've been doing, as you all know, we've been working on the drawings, working on the VE items that that we reviewed with you folks and we're and while we're doing that we're looking for more so during this this process we've been doing a shakeout essentially of the ve list that we proposed to 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 this group and we determined that the the after more investigation that the um the envelope of the addition cannot change so we were proposing that brick was going to become like a hardy board yeah. and then the roof was going to become asphalt shingle. What that would do to us, and Josephine, feel free to chime in, it's it's going to reduce the energy efficiency of, of the project. And we can't, at this late stage, we can't make that adjustment without a significant cost addition. Because we'd have to add more insulation, into the cavity right now we meet we we're doing great with the envelope we have we we meet the new uh in hand uh, the new stretch code but once we start tinkering we're going to be adding money and brick brick is um inherently um yes. you know very efficient thermally efficient and um where hardy board is not and so um it's somewhat of a downgrade in system so you have to compensate for that by adding the insulation. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're not seeing the full amount of money that we were hoping. Or or really any, Josephine, right? Because right. the cost of the insulation. So we wanted to share that with the group. That was the number one reason we were here, but we, we've been doing a lot of work. Um, our team in the office, and we've been working with landscape. Um, and we've come up, we, we're working on numbers in, in we're doing pretty well in terms of value engineering. Um, on, for instance, we're finding uh, we're reducing the. We have opportunity to save money in the ceilings of, of the building. Um, the landscape, uh, we, you know, we've got some good uh, savings there. Windows were a significant savings, changing from a curtain wall to a window, a typical window. Equally efficient, but we had a significant savings. So before Paul Bachman gets in, Ellen, I just want you to state again what you just stated about what you couldn't do. So the envelope. So 
the addition, right? The, we had what we had for a very long time. We had brick. Yep. And we had a metal roof. Correct. Now, <clears throat> we had proposed that we would change that. Rather yep. than brick, we would have hardy board. Rather than metal roof, we would have asphalt shingle. Yep. yep. After further investigation into the thermal properties of that system that we yep. had, the the going to hardy board would cost us, it would be a wash or it, a wash, or it would be more money because we have to add more insulation mm -hmm. because that hardy product is not as thermally, um, uh, it doesn't work as well as the, as the brick for it as thermal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what was the anticipated cost savings for the changes that we're not going to make? Do you have that at your fingertips, Josephine? I, I'm having trouble with my second screen, so I can only have okay. one up. Okay. Yeah, I do. If you give me a second. Well, Josephine is looking. Paul, did you want to ask your question? No, I, I was interested in what the – so this is a value engineering savings that we are now taking off the table because it doesn't make sense to do. And so I want right. to know what that number is too. Yep. It's 143000 143000 was the anticipated savings from going from changing the roof and getting away from bricks. Mm -hmm. uh, so 143 was the brick. Um, brick change and then yep. the roof was separated out and that was 50,000. So 143 on the bricks and the other the brick and the other was 50. So we are so to speak giving up $193,000 in savings. Yes, it, with those two, but there's a but here. We the number that we had carried for the VE of the curtain wall to window a typical yep. window is a high, higher savings than we anticipated correct josephine yes um quite a bit higher um so we had originally proposed curtain wall to storefront system now we're proposing curtain wall to a conventional window system that... and what what would the savings be so um the the new number for that is 237 and what was the old number? Thirty-seven thousand. What was the old number? And the old one, one hundred and fifty thousand. One hundred and fifty. Okay. So Austin, we're gonna have we're gonna have those kind of yep. ones higher, ones lower, yep. and what we're doing, um, our team design team is, we're looking for the items that were not on the table that we think we can put on the table like the ceilings we we've, we've really mm -hmm. we've really been able to um work on the acoustics uh, of you know of the ceilings with products that are not as expensive as we were having to use when it was um wood you know CLT you wanted to we, say say a little bit more about what yeah so what does that mean with the CLT right the CLT yeah. so you the reason you one of the reasons you use it is you want to see it yeah right so so we were for instance in the children's area we were doing these acoustic circle panels that we were hanging down that you could see between <laughs> to see the wood now the wood's gone and it's metal deck so we can use conventional acoustic tile ceiling just very simple and also in the in the lobby um the lobby the where the circ desk is we call it the main spine uh -huh. um we had these acoustic fins so it would allow you to see the the um the clt now we just have something more much more simple and more cost effective and those fins were on multiple levels too. So yes, yes, that's good going point. to help. For yes. So finish. my question is, uh, you may not be able to tell me this. What is it going to look like? These this new ceiling. Oh, we we will show you, Austin. We're having the renderings updated. Okay. We thought that would be helpful for the committee, the groups we have to go back to see, as well yep. as 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 this group here. Okay. 
so I just have a couple of other questions. So uh, we're thinking about um, time. Uh, how is it going in terms of time? I'll let Josephine speak to that. Because <laughs> I'm, yeah, go ahead, Josephine. Josephine's no, really say, heading up the drawings. I would say that we're in heading in a great direction. We're, um, you know, we're making um, all of the updates as we had discussed at our last meeting. Um, all of our consultants are on board and they're franking okay. away as well. So, yeah, it's going well. So I'm thinking about time in relationship to process. So uh, before we go to historic design review planning, uh, are we? is this committee going to have a chance to look at what it is that you're doing? I mean, next week would be the opportunity to do that if we were going to do that, because the following week is the first um, design review board meeting, I believe, that Wednesday. So next week would would be that opportunity. Right. But what, just let me add, Justine, the renderings won't be ready next week. They won't be ready to the following week, right, just before the meeting. Yeah, they... the, the reason I, it, this is just we'll work this out, but there is some just process wise. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to go forward. We're going to go to these committees, and we're going to show them things. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm just wanting to make sure that the building committee has a chance to weigh in before we've signed on the dotted line with this change or that change, which has been approved. Mm -hmm. We could just. I mean, what do you think? We can have a meeting next week. We won't have the renderings, but we certainly can explain and show you and plan what we're doing, Austin, for sure. Uh, Pam. I just wanted to pick up on Austin's comment about the timing and the process. Um, if in fact you are working toward getting drawings ready for design review board and planning board, um, what about the historic commission? I, I, I think they probably have as great a sway, uh, if not more than, than either of those other two entities. And I'm, and I'm wondering if, if this is a little bit of a detour, but, um, I would love at some point in the conversation to understand what our process is going to be for completing our historic section 10106 review. Sure. And that's because that's, that's got to happen before we put something out to bid that might alter irreparably damage the building. Right. So let's uh, just stick for a minute with the local things, and then we'll talk about the 106 process. Pam, thanks for that question. So uh, I think we should try, if we are able, to have a meeting so that we know what it is that the representation is going to be made on behalf of this committee to the various bodies, historic planning and design review. And I'll leave it uh, to... Well, Sharon, let's make sure that at the end of the meeting, we are, are going to try to pin down a, a date for that. Is everybody okay with that? I, I just think we've got to see it and make sure that we're comfortable with what's mm -hmm. going on. Okay. We agree, Austin. Uh, good. Sharon, do you want to say something about the 106 uh, process, where things stand with that, uh, what it involves? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So uh, it's a very prescribed process. It's um, uh, there are there's a definite beginning and a definite end um, that we will have to follow. We absolutely are meeting uh, with NEH and HUD. Um, Mass Historic is involved and um, all of the proper processes will be followed and everybody will be invited to participate. It's actually a really great process. Um, we will have more specifics coming up in the next couple of weeks. So is it fair to say that we are on top of this 106 process? Yeah, absolutely. And in close communication with the people in Washington, DC? Correct. Okay. And and who's actually running that? Is that Sharon that's, that's responsible for that process? It will be the town that leads it. The town meaning uh, Bob and me and Paul. Okay. 
So any other questions for FAA? So I have a question. So um, can you talk about the anticipated energy efficiency of the building that we are now contemplating building? So we know that there was some loss in the savings of, of, of right, the CLT, the embodied carbon. But based on what you are now, what we are now doing, what can you say about the um, sustainability and efficiency of the building? Do you want to answer that, Josephine? Well, I, no. I want to say we're working on it, but Josephine has more detail because we've yeah. been talking this through quite a bit, actually. And for, so folks know, and I don't know if we have this in place because this is probably three or four years old and we've been working on this for 10. Um, we have an arm of Feingold Alexander called FA Energy. So, right, we have we have a couple of experts in the office that are helping us through this, yeah. which has been really great. Go ahead, Josephine. So, I mean, the first thing is that we really are looking at other places where we can sort of supplement mm -hmm. for our losses, kind of like we're doing with with what we're removing on all of the items we're looking, you know, at how we can yep. still have, um, you know, still replace things, right, and, and still have, you know, a, a beautiful building. So we're doing the same thing with all the sustainability pieces, and so we're looking at other avenues of trying to save or, you know, be carbon forward thinking carbon forward right um if you want to call it that and so um for instance just last week we had a great call with um a company called recycle works which we um it, it's a it's a company that actually helps in retaining you know um materials and equipment and things so it's not going straight to landfill and they're you know they parse out um items and so we're just looking at other avenues where we can potentially um still be as sustainable as possible and also Josephine, we're looking at the fly ash how much fly ash we're going to use in the concrete yeah um so it's we're still exploring all of those options and mm -hmm. and Josephine, we were gonna were we gonna rerun the tally we were yeah. internally Yep. We were going to rerun the tally on our dime because yep. we want to know what it is. Right. And do you have a sense? Thank you for that. Do you have a sense of when um, that would be? Probably, what do you think, Josephine? Yeah, probably a few weeks in. Yeah. It's still, it's still a few weeks in because. A few um, weeks further out, you mean? Yeah. 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 Okay. A, few weeks, a few weeks further out because we um, have to get all of the consultants model updates in order to, to process that because it's an it's an analysis done through the 3d model that we have yeah yeah okay that would be good that'll be good to that'll be that'll be good to know about alex yeah thanks i just i just want to make a comment rather than have a a question and i just want to say to fa that i really really appreciate um you guys continuing to keep sustainability at the forefront and being creative around making sure that the end goal remains. So I thank you as, as, a, as a former member of the sustainability committee, I, I very much appreciate the work. So thanks so much. And I'm, I'm not sad that we're sticking with the metal roof and the bricks. So <laughs> I, it makes me happy. That's how it worked out. So thank you. Thanks, Alex. Oh, uh, Pam. Um, actually, I just forgot my question, so I'll come back to it. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Uh, or all right. So, I remember. Pam, are you, are you ready? I remember it. Sorry. Okay, great. <laughs> um, I I was not here um, when the the list of items was um was voted on, and I I did want to express some real concern about the item that appeared to have a really large um, price tag of savings, which is removing the millwork and not having to bring it back. Um, I, I want to ask, uh, just, just thinking about sustainability from that perspective, um, retaining and reusing the old Philippine mahogany millwork um, the drawings, if you look at them, are, are beautifully done. You know, each of those elements that's going to be retained and protected 
um, is very clearly identified in your in your cost savings, is it not possible to address the approach that I believe FAA brought up or mentioned, and that was the ability to cut around millwork, remove whatever adjoining plaster was needed, and then um, and then encapsulating the asbestos laden material underneath the the millwork. Um, where did that where did did that idea just fizzle? Or is that still being looked at? I think it's a really, really important element um, from the just the historic quality of that building. We Thank you, Pim. we thanks, Pim. We we talked about that. We talked about it with the estimators. Uh, it would be not a huge cost savings because then you you're gonna number one you're gonna leave asbestos at in most of the library, right? And you you'd have to go cut it cut it go around, encapsulate all the edges. Um, and then it's it's would be very difficult. And in, in the, the thought was and we wouldn't save significant money in doing that. And it, Pam, I'll tell you, we that that's not what we want to do, but we don't have a choice because behind a lot of the wood is the is the asbestos, right? So it, it's it's just very difficult. What where we are keep keeping it is in the front, I, I call it the front hallway, right? The historic stair. We're keeping that there and we're doing just that thing. So we're cutting it um, and we're encapsulating the top of it. It's it's difficult, but we are saving that front hallway vertically. So we, we are doing it localized. And at this point, um, Ellen, Josephine, what are you anticipating in the way of uh, the replacement of that, where it needs to be replaced, the wood, yeah, trim. We would go with very simple wood trim, and we haven't talked about if it's stained or painted yet, Austin. To be honest, okay. So the anticipation is you're going to replace where you need to replace with some a kind of wood product. Yes. Okay. Pam, did that help? No. <laughs> That's a really, it's a really poor solution for um, an incredibly beautiful building, and I'm, I'm just really disappointed to hear that. Okay, um, Alex. Thanks. Um, I guess I have a question. Um, it's interesting because when I think about the library, you think about all of the beautiful wood, but when you actually walk the library, a lot of it is actually the door frames or like the stairways and so I or or the mantles around the fireplace so um is it other than the front entrance hallway are we talking all the wood or could we expect the like the door frame to stay but it's all the paneling I guess I just I'm not entirely sure yeah. exactly which wood that's a good question Alex it's what so I, I should have been a little more clear we are also keeping all the mantles right so though all of those stay but all of the other trim goes unless unless the group decides to tell us something different and go cutting the plaster and um, encapsulating the ends and keeping everything I mean we're we're just trying to help close the gap so if, if there's a, a reverse of direction, just let us know, but we'd need to know right away. So my understanding, Ellen, but help me recall, was that part of the reason that we were thinking about doing this had to do with the complexity of the project. Yeah, that's, and, thank you, Austin. Uh, yes. No, hold, hold on. I'm in the middle of the Gettysburg Address. And that it wasn't just the cost. It was the project, the process was going to be so complex as to perhaps discourage people who might be interested in bidding from bidding. So uh, is that is that right, Ellen? That is correct, Austin. That you yes, and I apologize for leaving that out. In you know, Pam, thank you for complimenting the drawings because it took us hours to get them to where they were, and um, <clears throat> it is it's complicated, and it's it, in contractors see something that's not run of the mill, and the price goes up. And that's and that was that was the we got some feedback that it's just it's a it's a complicated project. Yeah. So it, oh. not only are we we're sit, we're trying to simplify everything as well. 
Yeah. Um, uh, I'll, uh, I'm going to ask Paul first, Alex, and then you, Paul. Oh, well, first, I thought it was funny that you said run of it's not run of the mill, uh, Ellen. I think that is a reference to mill work. And if it's run of the mill, it means uh, it's easier and cheaper to produce. Um, you know, I think about when I've seen historic preservation projects, and I, even in this building where I am in town hall, decisions were made all along about what to save and what not to save. And in this building, you know, and I think right now we would, you know, this building got awards for its its renovation. But but I know when I look at some, some things were lost, and sure, I'm sure, but in, in general, most many of much of the work is still valued for its historical authenticity. Um, so I think that what I would like to see as a member of this committee is that we put our money, our savings in the things that we value the most, which is like the doorways, the mantles, things that are eye-catching things in the sort of secondary moldings and things like that. I'm reluctantly willing to give up. Um, if that, I, I think complexity is, was a concern that we heard from the people who bid on the project and simplifying the project is important. Um, nobody wants to give up every, anything uh, in these projects. And, and I think this is the the wise decision. If our goal as a committee is to do value engineering, I think this is a compromise that I think I'm willing to make. Thank you, Paul. Alex? Thanks. Um, yeah, I actually had similar comments along with Paul's, but also I wanted to clarify too, I think, am I correct that removing the CLT was also a complicating factor in the bidding process and hopefully yes. we'll, Alex, it, we'll, it, we'll make that a better bidding process? It is. And you know what? It's it, CLT is becoming more popular. There's, <clears throat> we visited the UMass Amherst uh, project um, and it was it's just not as many contractors are familiar with it yet. It's coming, but it's not here yet. Um, and that's part of the that's part of the um, the problem. We you know, we we had uh, qualified um, bidders, but they didn't bid. So I, I think in is it five years? Seven years, you we you know you'd get more um, attention, but it's not not everybody has ex experience with it, so it scared a few people off. Yeah, but it's, e it's easy to forget sometimes that building a new building is much much easier than restoration on a hundred year old building and doing you know a low embodied, highly sustainable. I mean, we sort of are ticking all the boxes of of being on the cutting edge, and that makes the project more complex to bid. And so I think sometimes it's easy to lose sight of how complex the project is, which limits our our bidding. So thanks. It is. And uh, so I just, Paul, I want to be clear, because if there is a change of direction, we need to know now. The, so to, well, the only things we're, we're saving of the wood is that front entry in the stair and then up vertically in the mantles that's it if we're taking all the rest of the trim away if people want to save want to keep it at the door frames let us know but the more bits you add in you're adding the you're you know ticking up the complication so i want to make sure i understand the committee did a pretty careful yep. i think uh deliberate kind of walk through of all of these changes uh, I and I thought it was a pretty good process. Uh, Paul, are you are you suggesting that we now reconsider some of that? No, I'm saying what I'm saying is I'm confirming that we've established our value set. Great. And I I didn't mean I said door frames. What I meant was a stairwell in the front. Okay. That's okay. really what I meant. So Great. I realized I misspoke. Yeah. Yeah. Pam. Um, I actually thought I heard Paul say something a little different, but that um, um, in in thinking again about the the drawings that you did, uh, there's a great deal of the the mill work in the, on the on the ground floor, the the not the not the basement, I'll say the the first floor main entry level, which is the primary coming and going into that building. The second floor has some beautiful mill work. If 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 it were up to me and I had to make this horrible choice, 
I would say keep as much of the millwork as you can on the on the first floor because that is the that establishes at least the character and the historic presence of that building. I can't imagine what those walls and those entryways would look like with with Home Depot, you know, pre-primed baseboard. I mean, it's just, I'm sorry, but that just does not cut it for me. Ellen? Yes. The, uh, it's it's not Home, Home, Home Depot pre-primed, pre but we're doing, again, we're doing what we were told to do we was the committee voted us to do is keeping right. the stair and keeping the mantles. Right. And if that is deviated from, just let us know. Right. I thought, in fact, what we were trying to do was exactly what Pam described, which is we wanted to keep that kind of main entryway, yes. you call the main hallway as yep. much as possible to establish when people come in. That's correct. In the historic thing. So that's what I thought we were setting out to do. That's and exactly what we're doing. Okay, and good. that's what I've and maybe I'm describing it. I call it the lobby. It's the stair all the way up. That's right. it in the mantles. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alex. Yeah. Thanks. I guess so. The, I don't. I don't think I missed anything. But the way I thought we had left it was that we were going to have two options. One was the going around, and one was replacing the wood completely. And what I'm hearing. I think for the first time is that the going around is cost prohibitive and doesn't make sense. So I had thought we had left it as that was still something that was possible when we had voted last time. So this is the first time I'm hearing that that's not possible and maybe I didn't hear properly. But I guess, Josephine, can you remind us of the savings that we're talking about? Because I feel like they were pretty significant number, but I don't remember. I, mean, I guess there's two elements, right? One is cost and one is who can bid the project, which ultimately results in costs again. You muted, Josephine. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah no, we can. Okay. Yep. So, and we, and Josephine, while she's looking that up, Alex, the, our marching orders was that, is I described. And we right. weren't having that as an, an an alternate. Okay, right. So we have the delete reinstallation of the historic millwork at one million dollars. Yeah, yeah, out of out of an anticipated two point eight million, what was the total? Um, oh, the uh, uh, the the whole two point nine. Yeah, two point nine. So it's a big chunk of what it was that we. Mm -hmm. Um, hope to save. Okay. Any other questions for FAA? Uh, Austin, we had, um, we might want to just talk briefly about what we're doing in the landscape Great. in terms of yep, saving. Fabulous. Sure. Thank you. Josephine, I'll let you run through that. And we met, uh, we've met with the landscape folks and, and the estimator. So we have, we have some good news. Yeah. Um, BDG has been working um, hard on, on trying to figure out how to change some stuff around, some grading, and to to get some cost reduction in the landscape, and um, and so we have some updated um, uh, things on the VE list, also a couple of new ones, and then um, just some at, uh, updated costs. So um, they're regrading a bit to get the stormwater system to. Um, uh, to be a little bit more advantageous, advantageous to the to the cost, and so what they were able to do, um, they've been working furiously this week on, um, or last week on the new stormwater calcs, and with the new proposal that they have laid out, they're able to eliminate um, the bridge crossings in the back, and the um, the system at the front of the building as well. So. Um, it ends up being a cost savings of over 150,000. We're at like close to 170 for the removal of the bridge crossings at the back and the um, the system at the front. Hmm. So that's a pretty significant number. The um the number previously was 80,000 for that. 
and we had a <clears throat> meeting with the fellow from the town, I forget his name, Josephine, and he, he was really helpful to us uh, in, you know, giving us some suggestions and his opinions. Guilford? Oh, yes, Guilford, mm -hmm. yeah. Right, so that was another meeting that we had for the um, the fire station alley area, and so um, we were told that we should be dealing just with the library drainage only, so we have some um, uh, reduction costs there as well. Um, so there's still going to be new piping, um, but it's just going to be minimized, and they're not going to have to uh, repave the whole um, the whole uh, drive there um, also. So, um, so we have some savings there at thirty-seven thousand. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the one area that um, we actually pulled out of the um, the e list here was the catenary lighting in the back because um, it was only sixty-six hundred dollars and in order if we pull it out we have to replace it with something because it's too dark in that area mm -hmm. so we would have to replace it with building sconces or you know ballers or some other kind of lighting back there and so there just wasn't going to be enough of a savings there to to change that out so we we just pulled that one off the list um and then we um we did take out the uh, the Goshen benches um, at the front and rear. Um, we are leaving the ones that, that are at the entryway because they are serving multiple purposes and they're really small scope compared to the, the bigger picture. And they would have to be replaced with something else as well if those were removed. And the two, two of the benches at the front had lighting in them um, along the pathway and so those um, will have to be replaced with bollards but that's still a significant saving so we went ahead and removed those and factored in um, the cost of light bollards to put back in so that number is at 103,000 where previously it was 112,000. Um, you, you lost me the number is 103 it was 112 so you've saved nine thousand dollars so where you know where the number decreased a little bit because we still had to add you know new lighting in at the front. Yeah, so it was one hundred and twelve. It's now one hundred and three. Yeah, you save nine thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that I think that so just a big picture as we're going through this, yeah. we're trying to save everything we can, yeah, absolutely. and still keeping the landscape, you know, a hardscape intact. And I think, Austin, at the next meeting that we have with you, I think we'll have the landscape folks come in and give a brief description of what they're doing from, from their point of view, just so folks can understand that a, yep. in a little more detail. Yep. May yeah. I just ask? Oh, go ahead, Jimson. I'm sorry. I was just going to mention that they can bring their proposed plans and kind of Great. walk through the, the system as they have it designed now. Mm -hmm. Great. I, I just want to, Pam, before, before you get in, I just want to make sure I understand something. And this is actually a question for Bob and George Hicks and, uh, and as well as the architects. So uh, this building has been changed a lot over its lifetime. A lot. It's been changed many times. Some people rightly think that some of its changes were done in such a way that they actually were the wrong things to do and produce problems for the library. So the thing that I thought we had kind of gotten our hands around, but I want to make sure we still have our hands around it, is this process is not simply being driven by dollars. It's being driven by an idea that we can save money but still retain the integrity of what this building is going to be in a way that in 10 years, we're not going to be having leaking roofs and, um, you know, boilers that aren't working. And I take it that Bob now is our interim OPM and George is someone who's dedicated a large part of his professional life to the well-being of this building to say nothing of the director and trustees. 
that that is still a driving factor. And if it was at any point where it looked like this compromise is really going to that Bob Parent or George or the architects or anybody else would say no. So just as we talk about, and of course, some of that will involve discussion and debate about what it is that compromises the 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 building. But just as we talk, I think it's important to remember that, yes, we're looking for savings, but we're dedicated to the production of a renovation and expansion of this library that's going to serve the residents and the visitors to the town of Amherst for decades to come, um, as opposed to we're just going to save some money and then you guys are going to go away and in a few years we're going to be you know, out there with, I don't know what, and patching and patching things. And by the way, hearing that we're going to retain the brick and the metal roof makes me feel, um, as my mother used to say, even gooder about that um, that thing. Okay, so Pam, I thought, did I see you? Well, okay, I'll ask my question. Um, the plant material, going back to the landscape, does this mean that most of the plant material is being removed and is that part of the $150,000 of savings? So, I mean, most of the planting is, not all of it, most of the planting is being removed. They are still strategically placing some um, plantings around. Um, I'm not sure which 150,000 you're looking at. I'm sorry about that. But you eliminated the bridge. You're going to do some regrading. That was saving about 100. Oh, okay. So yeah, no, that that doesn't have plantings included in that number. I don't believe it's just no, the it stormwater system and the and the bridges. So can I ask what what's the savings then from the elimination of of plant material if you're if you're going to be doing a pretty heavy cutting of that as well? I, I don't think, Pam, we, we're settled on that. We we will, when we come back to the group, we'll, we'll run through those options. But still, we're still looking at it. Thank and we, we were going for the, the big, big numbers first, like the, 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 the uh, bridges and all that kind of thing. Great. And I think they were trying to really redesign um, if it's a new system, if what they're doing at the children's patio. I'm, they are trying to regrade a lot of the area. So until they do that, I think they really need to, to redesign that to figure the plantings out too. All right. Austin, okay. can I say one thing? Sure. In terms of what you were saying about the, you know, the longevity of the building, that kind of thing. Yes, our intention is that this building is as good as it was before the value engineering. It it's it's will be a solid building. The mechanical system is exactly the one it was. Yeah when we bid it. So we changed very little of, uh, we, we didn't change any of that. So yes, we're bu we're building a building that people won't have to worry about. It'll need regular maintenance like any, any building, but it will be solid. It'll be solid and it will be much more sustainable than the building that we now have by orders of magnitude. Yes, absolutely. Right. Okay. Any other questions for FAA? Well, we are very grateful for the work that you're doing and very, uh, I don't know, look much looking forward to seeing what it is that you will show us when, we next, when we're next together and grateful for the work that you're going to do as we shepherd this um, in conversation with our colleagues on various town committees. Okay, correspondence. Uh, I've uh, received an email at 421 from Councillor Shane. I haven't had a chance to look at it. So if there's anything that's in that correspondence for our committee, we'll take it up the next time. I know of no other correspondence. Topics not anticipated? I know of none. Uh, we have 20 attendees. Thank you all for coming. And now is an opportunity for public uh, for public comment, just to remind everybody, generally in the public comment period, we receive and hear public comment. We don't necessarily respond uh, in in the moment to what it is that people are saying. So anybody would like to 
uh, make a public comment, if you would raise your hands now. Okay, I see two people. Uh, Jeff Lee first. Thank you. Yeah, this is Jeff Lee. I live in South Amherst. And regarding this Section 106 review uh, required for publicly funded projects, I understand a letter surface written by the Mass Historic Commission and sent to the library director and the uh, Amherst Historic Commission, um, which highlights several adverse effects to the uh, historic character of the library. And this was based on the previous uh, project notification form from October that Epsilon produced. Um, I think it's a disservice to the public that you haven't made people aware of this letter, these findings. And if it were widely recognized, you might have made a different decision before uh, committing $550,700 from the endowment to rip out all of these uh, historic preservation features from a library that's registered on the state and national registers of historic places, which have special legal protections, state and federal. So I really hope you'll reconsider the direction you're headed. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, next is uh, Maria Kopecki. Maria? Thank you, Maria Kopicki, South Amherst. I'm not sure what the opposite of Curious George is, but that would have to be this committee. Um, I can't believe that you were given a timeline uh, that evoked absolutely no questions and no discussion. Uh, I can't believe that the MOA that was uh, not reviewed or discussed by the town council, but all happened out of sight wasn't discussed. I can't believe you didn't talk about the fact that you have changed your OPM midstream um, and how that decision was made and the impacts of that. I can't believe that that, I mean, I can believe it, but there it is. Um, the fact that you're gonna be going out to multiple different committees, design re review board, planning board, et cetera, without having actually seen what these changes are yourselves, you're going to have maybe some meeting real quick, but that's going to be, uh, I, I just don't understand how you can sit there and not ask any questions about like, oh, the Massachusetts historic uh, tax credits. Yeah, we're not doing those. No questions, no comments, nothing there. Y'all are talking about 106. Um, this is a public process. This is a public building. Uh, and you should explain to the public what you're talking about and to make that really clear. Um, also, all of these changes that you're talking about and these numbers that you're throwing about in this discussion, doing that without any visuals, without any putting up anything on the screen, it, it's pretty, pretty poor. Um, and we're coming to the end of this meeting. And... I still don't know what number now you're talking about that you think you're gonna save. In the meantime, you think that leaving a staircase in the beginning to in the front, and that's going to satisfy historic integrity is laughable. It's actually kind of an insult. Like here's what this used to be, but the rest of it is gonna be out of a, out of a box. Um, this is this is a mess, um, and you have a responsibility. You were appointed. You're supposed to be representing the town. You need to to stop what you're doing. And get genuine input and explain yourselves to the public who's gonna be footing the vast majority of this. And you need to just plain stop. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I see no other, I see no other public comment. Okay, uh, Sharon, let's think now about when we can 
uh, when we can get together. Uh, so. Do you want to do the 16th? If that works for everybody, 16th at 5 o'clock. FAA, does that work for you guys? Josephine, does that work for, for what do you think? I think it just essentially pencils down and review what we have. You're, You're muted. muted. Can't hear you, Josephine. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I think it's just pencils down and we'll, you know, uh, do it that evening. I was mentioning that we should just check in with Rachel at BDG to make sure that she yeah. can join that call, but um, most likely her just will be able to. So. Okay, and any objection to the 16th at 5 o'clock? Okay, so Sharon, if you would notice a meeting for the 16th at 5 o'clock. Okay, Sixth thanks. Day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, FAA. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Stay well. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned.